Okay, the one thing I wanted to talk to you about today, besides my life and why I wasn't on last night, was fifth dimensional consciousness. I just want to get a little kooky with you, if that's okay, because I think people don't really understand what 5D means. We hear it a lot in New Age culture, in these New Age streets. You've got these New Age gurus and teachers. I mean, and I, I guess I've talked about it too. You hear us talk about 5D, but what are we even talking about? We also hear teachers talking about the shift and about ascension and that we're all going somewhere, but where are we going? And what do you mean by that, Crystal Ann Compton? Is my body going to be going somewhere? Or is it just my mind start shifting in conscious, consciousness? We don't really understand what shift is. And I think the first thing you should know is like, I don't think we're, we, we, anybody really knows exactly what the outcome is going to look like. It could be a variety of things. It could be a full body shift, like Jesus talked about in the Bible. Two men in the field, one goes up, one stays down. I guess that's a possibility. Or it could be just a shift in the consciousness where we find ourselves existing from a different dimensional orientation, not necessarily a stark adjustment, but rather just a flow into a new reality. Dawning of the age of Aquarius, my friend. I wanted to explain kind of how this dimensionality works and, and how that relates to us. So let's start with 3D. To understand 5D, we're going to have to start here in 3D. I want you to picture 3D kind of like a rainbow spectrum, okay, a rainbow spectrum. And on this end of the spectrum, we have lower 3D reality, which can be identified by lower vibration. And that's not a judgment, actually. That's just a quality of the energy. It's denser in these lower vibrational frequencies. And then we have people, we have humans existing on all points of this spectrum. And some people do exist in these lower vibrational realities. And see, the lower you are, or the closer you are to the boundary lines or to the ending points of the dimension, the closer you are to the next most proximate dimension. So if we're, stay with me, because this is cool. So for those people who are hanging out in these lower, what we call octaves of our dimension, they are proximate to 2D reality. 2D reality is the domain of the animals of the plants and of plant and animal consciousness. And so humans who hang out proximate to 2D reality tend to be in a denser vibration and sometimes they can exhibit animalistic types of inclinations. For example, warring personalities, people who wanna fight all the time, people who wanna commit crimes and things of that level. Addictive people also tend to be in this really sticky space on the outskirts of the dimension. That's lower 3D reality. Now let's move all the way to higher 3D reality. In higher 3D reality, in this rainbow octave, we are close to fourth dimensional reality. Now, interestingly, that's where most of us are. Not everybody. Again, we've got humans all over the spectrum, but most of us, light workers, awakening folks, people who work with energy, we are hanging out in these rainbow octaves at the higher vibrational end of 3D reality. We have a proverbial foot, if you will, in 3D reality, earth reality, and one foot in 4D reality. Now, when people say we're shifting, some people think we're actually shifting from 3D into 4D, but that's not actually the case. We're gonna bypass, for the most part, 4D reality and head right into fifth dimensional reality. Why? It's a good question, I'm glad you asked. Why? Because 4D reality is a portal dimension. It's like that train station in Hogwarts where you have people coming, little witches and all these beings kind of getting on trains, getting off trains, going to different places. That's kind of what 4D reality is. Fourth dimensional reality is the realm of the dreamer. It's the realm of the, the departed, the dead that have not crossed. It is the realm of other beings entering into the train station, if you will, in order to access 3D reality, to access us. Picture, if you will, a boat on a river. Picture, if you will, that scene from Star Wars where they walk into a bar 
They got all kind of crazy aliens just partying and the weird music and dancing. That's kind of like fourth dimensional reality. There's all kinds of energy there, all kinds of entities there in various stages moving in various spaces. Now there are some fixed beings in fourth dimensional reality. We would call these earthbound spirits. We'd call these ghosts. But for the most part, it's kind of a transient space. When you go to bed at night and you pop out of your body, which you do every single night, by the way, and you begin to dream and you begin to really travel dimensionally, the first space you find yourself in when you pop out of your body is 4D reality. Again, this is the domain of the dreamer. And so for those of us who can stay conscious as we pop out of the body into that realm, we can actually perceive that Star Wars bar and all the weird beings that are hanging out there. And we very quickly, the seasoned among us, very quickly get out of 4D and pop into some other space, dimensionally speaking. But that's fourth dimensional reality. It's a portal. It's a train station. It's where the light is when we die. Go into the light. Go into the portal so you can transition into the next dimensional phase. So those of us hanging out on this 3D spectrum over here in the rainbow octaves are actually getting pulled through that portal dimension towards fifth dimensional consciousness. I like to call these the rainbow octaves. Why? Because what happens when you look at a rainbow and when one color transitions to another color? I don't know, is it red to orange or orange to red? I don't, I should know that, but I don't know, but all the colors. Well, if you were to microscopically zoom in at the boundary land between red and orange, you would see therein exists a commingling of both red and orange. Both colors exist simultaneously in their own reality. If you kept on traveling, you'd move into orange or red, whatever color it is. But in that boundary land space, it's a commingling, an equal commingling, measure for measure of both colors. That's where a lot of us are hanging out right now. We are hanging out in the commingling of the energies of 3D and 4D, making our way into fifth dimensional reality. That's what's up. What is fifth dimensional reality? Fifth dimensional reality is the domain of Christ consciousness. It is the domain of Buddhic consciousness, which means the consciousness of the Buddha. It's also the domain of the ascended master, the saint, and the avatar. Now, the thing that all of these energies and these beings have in common is that there's a correlate between them and humanity, because these saints and avatars and Christ and Buddha, they were all at one point human. And so there's a bridge that exists from the third dimension to the Christ consciousness and unity consciousness, truly, of the fifth dimension. And as we are hanging out in these rainbow octaves, we can actually pull through the portal of the fourth dimension, the energy of 5D reality. And as we begin to partner with our own process of awakening, which I suggest we all do through learning and through disciplines and through vibrational modification, as we continue to do that, we become less 3D oriented and more 5D oriented. We become more one with one another. We become more unified with one another. One love, the law of one. There is no separation in the fifth dimension. <clears throat> there is no you, there is no me. And at the highest levels, at the very highest levels of consciousness, which would be source energy, archangelic energy, and the I am, the oversoul, that's you as you truly are, there is no identity there. There's no gender gap, there's no gender problem, there's no black, there's no white, there's no racism, there's no nothing. There's no names, there's no me, there's no you. All that we want to do at those higher levels of consciousness is to align and to identify from source energy. When you talk about archangels, for example, you talk about Michael, and we ask Michael, hey Michael, will you do this for me? I always say, Hey, Michael, will you do this for me in the name of God? Because nothing that the angels do, nothing that the I am impulse does exists outside of the will of source energy. It just cannot. They seek to identify themselves with source and they don't care that you call them Michael. They don't care that you call them Raphael. They don't care that you know what their attributes are. They only care that you connect with source energy. That's the role that they serve. Similarly, in fifth dimensional consciousness, there is no you and me. 
There is no Democrat and Republican. There is no black and white. There is no this country and that country. There's nothing like that. There's nothing that separates the consciousness. In fact, I wouldn't be a bit surprised to tell you the truth if at the end of it all, when we finally get clear, sloughing off this 3D construct, if we find that we've been one organism the entire time. We are one soul complex, sharing the same experience just from different angles. We're approaching it from different angles, but we've been the same organism, the same soul, the entire time. And that's the folly and the problem of 3D reality. The folly of 3D reality is the illusion of separateness, of us versus them. Me versus you. You can't possibly understand me because it's me and that's you. Well, that's an illusion because that doesn't exist beyond the construct of this universe, which that's all it is. It's a construct. This is just a playground for us to experience things. And we are more and more in this universe, in, the, in these incarnations, trending out of rainbow octaves in 3D reality and into unity consciousness. Check out this new generation of children, for example. Even my child, when she was coming up in high school, it wasn't like when I was coming up in high school, when there were bullies and the gay kid was always getting beat up or made fun of or, or, or the minority was always getting hassled or beat up. And by the way, I was the minority growing up in Hawaii on an outer island. I got the shit beat out of me all the time. And I had to fight all the time because I was white. My brother had it way worse. I don't want to go there. My brother got it way worse just because we were white. That's what the reality was when I was coming up. But my child had it way different. The paradigm had seemed to shift. With my child, students seemed to really want to take up the cause of the underdog, of the one that was being oppressed, of the one that was being hated upon. And my daughter was really activated about being an activist for the downtrodden and for the one who was the underdog. You have a group now, a generation, that is completely open to this idea of the consciousness into which we are entering because we gave birth to them. We gave birth to them. We brought them into existence. And we've been shifting, haven't we? We've been changing, haven't we? And we brought them with us. And so they've had access through us to this new information and this new energy. And it's a lot easier for the children now to accept and to love. And we are seeing, we are really, we are seeing, it doesn't seem that way on social media, but we are seeing an acceptance of all people. This is unity consciousness in action. A love for all people, a wanting to represent the downtrodden and wanting to advocate for those who do not have, who have been oppressed. We see this. It's happening all around us. The kids these days want that. It's the elders who are like, well, hmm. Still caught up in my programming a little bit. I actually asked Spirit about this because I was talking to Trisha and to Lauren about their program last week. Um, and I went into sort of a session with Spirit about like what's happening and, and why is it happening? And what Spirit showed me was that really up until about the 80s or the 90s, before the dawn of the aging of, of, of Aquarius, we have been laboring under the umbrella of limited consciousness, programmed consciousness. My father was a bigot. My father's father was not a bigot, but he had his own problems. Um, your parents had their own problems. They had their own mentality. The society back in the 40s, 50s, even 60s and 70s, so that was the tipping point. The society in the 1800s, the society 1,000 years ago, all of this is operating under an umbrella, a blanket of limited consciousness and ability to perceive but with the shift that's taking place and it is taking place there is an opening up in the consciousness there are these inroads these channels into the consciousness and these breaks that are happening where we are taking in fifth dimensional energy which is magnetic it's magnetic as we take it in we draw closer to it and as we draw closer to it, we take in more of the fifth dimensional energy. And that's what I think these kids represent, an openness to fifth dimensional unity consciousness and a spurning of consciousness ceilings and consciousness limitations and programming and the pain body also that comes from those structures. 
I think we need to be careful as spiritual people here. And I want to tell you why. Because of a, a lot of us still speak from some of that limited consciousness because we came up through it. Period. But I can see a lot of us can still speak from the pain body that we came out or are coming out of as a society. We speak out of limited consciousness. How do you know it's limited consciousness? Because it's not love. How do you know it's limited consciousness? Because it's divisive. It's separatist. Expanded consciousness is not a respecter of persons. Creator is not a respecter of persons. For God sees not as man sees. For man sees the outward appearance, but God sees the heart. First Samuel. And fifth dimensional consciousness is the paradigm of that. Being able to relate to one another, not from limited consciousness, divisiveness, blame, hatred. Because hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Only love can do that. I think we have to be careful as spiritual people when we speak from that place of limited consciousness, those places that still exist within us, to the people who are awakening and who are coming into the vibration of healing and love. One love, I love. And we tell them, well, wait a minute. Do you know about all this? Do you know about this group? Do you know about this hatred? What, do you, what is your position on this? And what is your position on that? When they are moving into the expansive energy of one love, unity consciousness, we gotta be careful. We can't call back the blessing of what's happening. We can't hamper the expansion and awakening of another person who actually feels the energy of unity consciousness. As light workers, we say we want to heal this space. I've come into this room to bless this room. There is no other reason for me to be here. Will be that blessing. In unity consciousness and in fifth dimensional consciousness, there is space for everyone, no matter the color, white, black, no matter the ethnicity, Asian, Latino, it doesn't matter in unity. Do you think that matters in unity consciousness? God is not a respecter of persons. In unity consciousness, there is no space for strife around male versus female, gay versus straight versus trans versus bi versus preference. There is no strife around nationalistic borders, politics. It doesn't exist there. What do you really want? Who do you say that you are? Are you love? Because perfect love casts out all fear. Perfect love casts out all fear bigotry in any direction and in all directions perfect love casts all of this out where are you coming from hun are you coming from love are you coming from one love do you mean it that's what we have to ask ourselves we cannot contribute to the contamination happening because here's what happens when we begin trending towards these borderlands these rainbow octaves there's always a reverberating effect in the other end of the spectrum because they are being forced to come along they are being forced to reposition within the dimensional reality they are being forced to waken up and when you're stuck somewhere when you're angry somewhere, when you're pissed off somewhere, you don't want to change. You resist change at all levels. And so where there is progress and where there is expansion and where there is love, there is a reverberating wobble that takes place in these lower, denser energies. And people start making a ruckus. The divisiveness gets even louder. What's real, though? And what's the goal, though? The goal is to bring in more of the Christ consciousness. The goal is to orient more from this different spectrum. The goal is to bring heaven into this earth as above, so below. That's the goal. And we cannot forget it. If it isn't in love, then it's a waste of time. Love never fails. God is love. If what you're saying out of your mouth is not loving, then it's a waste of time. It's a contamination to what's happening here in this shift and in this process. And if your anger is getting you in the way, is getting in the way of allowing you to love me because I'm a woman, because my daughter's gay, because I'm white, 
If your anger and your predispositions are getting in the way of loving me perfectly, then you got a problem. And if my preconceived notions, my pain body is keeping me from loving somebody else perfectly, then I have a problem and I seek to root it out because my goal is to be love. My goal is to show and to shine love. Anything less than that is not that. Anything less than that is, that is not that. Do you understand what a responsibility we have as light workers? To let the kids get the 5D. To let the kids bask in the oneness and not blame them for not understanding everything that happened before and why don't you understand all the things that happened to this person or that person or that group or this why, why, why. Let them be in the 5D. It's what we said we wanted all along. Until we can love each other, no matter what, we're never going to be able to fully shift into the other space. I want to remind us of the work of Dolores Cannon. May she rest in peace. In many of her books, she talked about the ascension. She talked about the shift that was going to take, a place, take place. And she said, people are going to know that others have shifted out. Those of us who are on the lower spectrum of 3D, maybe midland spectrum of 3D, are not going to know when all these folks hanging out in the rainbow octaves of the higher levels of 3D have shifted into 5D reality. It'll just be the world that they inherit. It's the world that they created. It's an outpicturing of the world that lives with them, within them. And because they never transitioned into this higher vibrational understanding, this is where they dwell. Meanwhile, those of us hanging out in fifth dimensional reality, we will know because we've created a new understanding. It'll be the same earth, I think. And so did Dolores Cannon. She said, same earth, different frequency. And so my challenge for you is to pivot away from this magnetic bullshit of anger that we see all over the internet. Turn, your, turn away from that and pivot instead toward what we are calling into existence, which is a fifth dimensional consciousness. I started this broadcast by talking about, I think I mentioned, I don't know, I've been talking a lot today. <laughs> I've started by saying that I registered a domain. It's called lightshinechurch.com. Lightshinechurch.com. Maybe you know that, maybe you don't. But the subtitle is a church for everybody, a church for everybody, an opportunity to reclaim what spiritual community is, where we actually do support one another, where we actually do hold space for this higher dimensional energy, where we actually do contribute, not contaminate, to the changes that we seek to see in the world by being those changes, by being that love, by being the way showers. We need spaces like that locally and online. We need to be that. The thing about lower vibrational frequency here in the 3D reality is it is sticky. And if you allow yourself to go there, get angry, get triggered, if you allow yourself to speak from there, it's hard to get out of it. Have you ever tried to help an addict, a rageaholic? They're in these lower dimensional frequencies that are denser, holding them there. It's hard for them to cycle out of it and start to ascend or start to change their frequency. So as lightworkers, we can't go there. It's like shadow work. You'll get stuck there. If you entertain the tomfoolery that we're seeing, it's just a reverberating effect of what's happening over here. All the screaming, all the yelling, all the identity politics, all the divisiveness, all of the name calling is just a reverberating effect of what's going on over here. Let's say thank you. That's what happens when we are trending in a new direction. There's going to be a kicking up of the dust in these lower energies. Let that not deter us. Don't get sucked into the low energy. Don't contaminate, and, contaminate it and make it harder for us to get where we're going to go, which is the domain of the Buddhic. It's the domain of the saint. It's the domain of the Arcturian. It's the domain of the healer. It's the domain of Christ consciousness, unconditional love. That's what I want. Who do you say that you serve? Who do you say that you are? Do you love me? 
flaws and all, can you love me? Can you accept that I love you no matter what? Can you accept that I think you're perfect no matter what? No matter what I look like, no matter what I've been through. Can you accept that I love you? That's where we all have to go. Let's start having relationships and interactions where the heart does the talking. For God sees not as man sees. For man sees the outside appearance, but God sees the heart. Let us start talking from our heart. Let us start loving from our heart. I walk around on the weekends in the farmer's market, in the stores. I smile to all kinds of people. It is rare to get a smile back. It is rare to get a smile back. Can you love me? Even though. That's the challenge. I want to put that challenge to you. That's the work of the light worker. That's the work part of being a light worker. It's holding the space, holding the energy, and being the love. I want to be the love. I want to spread the love. I want, I want that to be my contribution to this place, to this dimensional container. I want to hold that. I want to hold it for the babies. I want to hold it for these millennials. I want to hold it for the elders. I want to hold the space with the right intention of unconditional love, one love. And that's what I came here to talk to you about.